agenda. So the regular agenda was presented to you. Uh, well, if there's a operational acknowledgement, it's already here. I'm not going to try to read it because I'm going to screw it up. So I'm going to say that that's what it is. That okay? Or do you want me to try to read this? Okay, it would be really nice if you'd made it for me respectfully. Okay. We the re re we, uh, and one of us could do it if you don't want to. Yeah. Happy to do that. You're already I'll stepping up the chair. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. Okay. We would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Tunhaha and the Sidlix uh, and the Senex peoples, right? And is home to the Metis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honor their connection to the land and rivers and respect the importance of the environment to our strength as a community. Okay? Very nice. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, the adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Moved by Lena, second by Jane. Be reminded, motion's carried. Okay, thank you. Uh, adoption of the minutes of the April 13th meeting. Motion to accept those. Moved by Sue. Second. Second by Liz. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Excellent. So, is there any present? There are no presentations to the board. No. Are, are there, Chief? No. Nope. Okay. So, this, this stands. So, public participation. Well, that's the policy. So, I'm not going to read that. That's just fine. The business arising from previous meeting of the Diversity Advisory Committee. We have an update for that. Yep. So the next scheduled meeting is June 1st of this year, obviously, and uh, the sort of key points of the next meeting are to, uh, to have the setup committee, who are the group that's been helping us kind of get to the stage we're at and working with Dr. Magasa. Uh, they're to bring recommendations as to what their thoughts are and feelings are and which groups we should make sure that we have represented as part of the DAC. Uh, they're also to bring any nominees that they might have to put forward as uh, members of the DAC. Um, but uh, I believe we're going to do that with the understanding that we're still going to reach out to the identified groups to get direct input from them. Um, they're also planning to finalize all the terms of reference, including the priorities and objectives of the committee. And this is also the last planned meeting with Dr. Magasa. So, um, should be a good meeting and we should hopefully have some stuff finalized and then start moving to the next phase of the committee of actually setting up the committee. It's moving on really well. Yeah. Have we be. had, and we may have, and I missed it, have we had um, a list of who the people are that have been participating in this with you? I know they won't necessarily be permanent. Uh, well, we committee. have a list. I don't know. Uh, exactly if that's been shared or in what format it's been shared. But I can I'm just curious that. to know yeah. who, who has been involved at all. Yep. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks. Any other questions? No, it sounds like a lot is happening at that meeting. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really uh, excited to maybe have, you know, might be a little ambitious to have it in place before summer, but it'd be nice to have you know, the, the start of the formation of the actual DAC itself uh, by the start of summer. Great. The thing that I think is a real obstacle, and you've probably already talked about it, is that every organization in town that has any interest whatsoever in diversity or truth and reconciliation or decolonization is looking for diverse people from various groups to sit on their boards and committees and everything. And, you know, there's only a handful of people who really stepped up to those kinds of things. And I'm sure there must be others out there, but I'll be interested to see whether or not you get recommendations. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I guess we'll kind of play it by ear a bit to see what happens after the next meeting or two. And mm -hmm. uh, if we have to change strategies or entertain some other ideas to, to make sure that we get a good core group of people that uh, are really make it meaningful, we'll, we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. I think it just means a lot of relationship building over a, a long period of time, okay. you know, just to identify and get to know people in, you know, different um, diversity groups that might be encouraged to participate mm -hmm. in this kind of thing. Yeah, and I think the reality is that Nelson isn't as diverse as like Toronto or mm -hmm. like Vancouver, yeah. right? So I think sometimes it, it you know, it can be somebody who may not be part of that group, but maybe best 
able to represent them for now. Mm -hmm. As they've told, people come out, you know, and we would make it possible. But yeah, not that's not enough in the pool, as you say. There's not a big enough pool, right? Mm -hmm. I remember being in a, um, it was one of the webinars we had or, or conversation with police board members across the country and um, Ottawa was talking about its diversity advisory committee and um, it was it was really a committee made up of um, uh, racial diversity. It wasn't like it wasn't um, it didn't also include LGBTQ right, exactly. and all of that. And so, I mean, one of the things in our community, because we are small, it's you know we're not going to have a a DAC within the LGBTQ community and a DAC within mm -hmm. the racial racialized yeah. community and a DAC. You know what I mean? It, there'll be one, one and exactly. so it'll be yeah a range of diversities, if you will, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. I think no, actually it's really good when you bring across mm -hmm. sectors and interests and all that sort of Because stuff. I think that's the reality of Nelson too. When you talk about diversity, it's not just about ethnic diversity. Well, exactly. Because we're not very ethnically diverse, no. right? But well, we have diversity. Yeah, and yeah, and mm -hmm. the intersectionality of all yeah. of that too. Yeah. But I also think it's a good starting point that if there is interest for, if you want to call them subcommittees, I yeah. think that'd be a good starting sure. point for that yeah. too. And we could mm -hmm. look at doing something like that so if there's an interest and a need for it. Yeah. And even if there's only two or three people to start, you know, yeah. what, what did you identify as your optimum number? I think we put a specific number on it because I think we wanted to see what the interest but I you know I would think we'd want seven or eight people kind of ideally yeah, um, yeah. but again we'll we'll start with what we have and I think after you get a little bit of you know momentum and success I think that you know more people become interested so I'm hoping it's something that even if it starts small it kind of grows over time. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just curious, are we including age diversity by including anyone from like a youth category? That did come up at one of the meetings. Um, uh, or seniors. Catherine, that <laughs> the Catherine that mentioned that because because she Kathleen. worked kind of with <laughs> Kathleen, sorry, worked some with the uh, the college. Um, that, you know, that, that might be something we look at. I think that's that's sort of some of the discussion at the next meeting, like what groups should be represented, whether it's youth, seniors, um, the different diversity groups. And and again, you know, maybe maybe that's something we look at that might be a value, but maybe that's a different committee that we'd want to set up. A, but again, that's for, I guess, the next meeting discussion is specifically to that point. Great. Uh, interesting. Yeah. When you think of diversity, yeah. you don't think of the youth of both yeah. seniors. It's true. I think of youth. <laughs> oh, good discussion. Okay, we'll move on to the next item and uh, the chief report. Chief, let's take this through. Sure. So uh, the first thing on the list, I believe, is the BC AMCP and BC ACP meetings. So. Um, just had the BC AMCP meeting yesterday, so a little bit of an update from that. Um, a lot of the discussions, uh, the last meeting or two has been around the JIBC, so the Justice Institute where the, the cadets train, but they do a number of other things as well. Um, kind of some positive news that they're planning for the largest uh, graduating class in the last couple of years, uh, in particular since COVID uh, sort of set in, so they're actually looking for an external venue to hold the graduation in because they're expecting a pretty large turnout for it. Um, so that's a positive. Um, they're also, as they get up and running, I, I think uh, a bit and, and taking on some more training within the JIBC, they're looking for some experienced members as instructors. So uh, obviously we're having some resourcing issues, but uh, we did put that out to the department just because we don't want to exclude somebody from a potential opportunity to go and do something like that. So um, I, I think there was some, it was an interesting proposal for some people, but the fact is that it's a pretty big move for people from here, whereas people who are in the lower mainland area, it's a lot easier for them to do us a comment like that. So uh, at this point, I, I don't say we I wouldn't say we have nobody going or interested, but it seems like it's probably not likely. But as I said, we did want to put it out there for people to, to express an interest if they wanted to. 
um, for the next class coming up in September, so the next recruit class, they generally have 64 seats available. And they were saying they already have 85 requests for those 64 seats and, and expect several more. So um, we're pretty much guaranteed one seat every class. It's for ours to take or turn down, but mm -hmm. I know they get pretty eager to know if we're not going to use it because they, as, as you can see, they have a pretty substantial waiting list for those spots if they have anything come available. Um, but again, high demand. Uh, class 167, which is currently in, and they're in block two, which is their field training. So Constable Chown is part of that. So she's back here now and uh, uh, I think getting a lot of good experience so far. And she's been with a, a few different trainers. Uh, she has her main trainer, but she's getting uh, some different uh, perspectives and people taking her out on different things and that. Uh, so uh, I think it's working out very well. And I found out that uh, they have a few new training modules that they're uh, they're putting in as pilot projects. So right now in her curriculum, and I haven't had a chance to ask her if uh, if if she's had this training already or it's in, in the third block when she goes back. But it's uh, called public scrutiny and and indigenous public safety. So it sounds like a, it should be kind of an interesting. Um, um, program that they're up and running. They already said there's a few things that have kind of come to light that they're going to tweak it for future classes, but uh, obviously it's uh, it's a fairly important topic these days, and I'm glad to see that they're uh, working some of that into the curriculum there. Uh, a couple of the other courses they're looking at are operational stress, um, the ABLE training. I don't know if anybody familiar with ABLE. So I, I've been on a couple of sessions with that, and we were looking at bringing that to the current officers in the province, uh, several departments are interested in putting on ABLE and it stands for Active Bystander for Law Enforcement and it's geared around peer intervention and harm reduction and you know in a nutshell it's basically there to prevent uh, misconduct or harm so um, junior members, lower rank members are taught uh, skills and uh, confidence to speak up when they see something happening that maybe is inappropriate. It sounds um, like a, something that came out of the whole George Floyd thing. Like and that's exactly it. It Able, uh, I believe, was a program before that, but it certainly got a lot more notoriety and uh, attention after that because, uh, well, I won't have to go into details. It's obvious what, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of the concerns yeah. there were. So, and uh, trauma-informed practices has been on the curriculum. So uh, apparently it's at that uh, they've run it through a couple times now, I think, and so they they go back and assess the value of it and how successful it's been and whether or not it stays on as a and core the, curricular item. Yeah. yeah. That trauma informed practice is something that also has been part of the annual or the training for officers who have already. Yeah, policing certain, standards right? made it yeah. uh, a mandatory mm -hmm. curriculum item, so yeah. we're pretty much all, if not all, completed. Oh, good. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's a couple of people that still missed a couple of the training dates. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't available when they were available. So, mm -hmm. but for the most part, the, the majority of the departments completed okay. that training. Uh, BCAMCP in-person training is is uh, coming up this year, as well as the uh, police board meeting, which is in two weeks, give or take. Um, so a couple of topics that they're talking about uh, having at both of those meetings are around the JIBC funding. Uh, there's been certainly some discussion and concern that uh, the, the JIBC isn't getting the funding it needs to, you know, put on a lot of these uh, progressive type courses and then just some of the training that's uh, required these days. So they want to keep the curriculum modern and advancing with the times, but Obviously, those things cost money. Uh, the BC Police Act transformational uh, review document that was um, published recently. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a, a big discussion item at a lot of meetings going forward. And uh, uh, so I think that's included on both those. Ecoms is another big topic. Fortunately, it doesn't affect us really directly here. Um, but you know, it does affect the majority of communities, especially on the municip municipal policing front. So uh, I expect you're going to hear quite a bit about that. And the other piece that I, I think I'm going to be interested to hear about is uh, 
Uh, I think there's been a lot of lessons learned in the last year dealing with protests and uh, demonstrations and things like that. So uh, that's one of the, the items for discussion. And I think probably more on the policing side of things. But uh, as I said, just uh, lessons learned and best practices and some of the things that we can be aware of and maybe put into place. Uh, you know, I'm I'm surprised even in the last 10 years how much uh, dealing with protests uh, uh, on the policing side of things has evolved. It just seems like it's an ever changing and uh, pretty dynamic topic. Uh, kind of once you get it figured out, it seems like it takes a hard right somewhere in your back at square one trying to figure it out again. And the last thing uh, was CPCL, which is the Crown Police Liaison Committee. And Raj has been uh, uh, attending some of those meetings online, but um, deals with the ledger training around uh, disclosure items and DEMS, which is digital evidence management systems. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's been a big push the last several years to go to more of a digital platform for disclosure, but obviously those things come with issues and costs and uh, privacy concerns. And there are some issues around integration of different departments and different systems and what the crown you know requires to open view and read all this stuff and who's responsible for you know making sure the crown has that so uh you know progress always Especially comes with a price tag and yeah across the street, right? it certainly is <laughs> and there's only one piece of paper the yeah. you know the digital world sometimes you lose control of stuff and it's always a big risk so uh, on the community policing front the the biggest thing was our recent commendation ceremony that we had last week i think uh it went very well. We had a really good turnout, and uh, and uh, I think it was a really nice ceremony. And uh, I know Shiloh's going to get tired of hearing it, but it's uh, thanks to Shiloh for all the hard work. The deputy chief did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just had to show up and talk. Yeah. <laughs> and Shiloh, it sounds like too. Shiloh put it all together. She just looks quietly. I know yes. exactly. Better. And Liz, thanks for coming as well. Sorry for the. Uh, confusion I guess I wished uh, I wasn't very good at being an impromptu host I guess I should have called you up to help present a couple of the awards but <laughs> but uh, appreciate you you coming as well um, as as well on that topic there was uh, seems to be some pretty good uh, media interest and and there should be some good media coverage coming up in the next couple of days or this week in the paper with the awards and mm -hmm. some photos and that so it'll be nice to see when that comes out and the last thing on uh, in this portion of the meeting, uh, the Nelson Police Foundation. Just want to remind everybody that the burger and beverage night is this coming Saturday, the 14th, and uh, Shiloh has tickets. So if you if you're wondering where to get them, you can get them right here. And if not, I guess you can get them at the door as well. So excellent. And that's it for my portion. Any questions to the chief? Actually, um, yeah. to anyone who's going, yeah. I can't go to the conference. Please take notes. I mean, really, so I mean, do whatever you need to do. But I, I would like to hear about it when you when you come back. We can always consider that our obligation yeah. for people who can't make it, right? Because right. we all need to have the information. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of good information at those. I'm looking forward to being able to get back to a couple of those in-person conferences. Well, and also the conversations you have offline yeah. that aren't actually in the presentation. Sometimes those are even more valuable. Maybe, Shiloh, we should have a short agenda item on it in the next meeting. Just wrote it down. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Move on to the deputy. I'll just do a very quick update on restorative justice. Uh, Kathy's run a couple training sessions, um, facilitators training, it was done in April 30th, just the update in regards to introduction in regards to the amendments we made. And then uh, she's been seven introductory se sessions to uh, restorative justice uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think, you know, you attended a few. Right? Yeah, attended every, every one but one so far. Yeah. So uh, that's going very well. And then uh, she's just finalizing the restorative justice policy and procedures manual, which should be done by the end of the, man end of the month. So that's. All my updates. Yes. <laughs> Any questions to the deputy chief? I just on the training. I mean, I, there's only a few of us attending, so but this is sort of the first time that it's being offered, and maybe next time there could be 
a lot more publicity and have more people participating yeah. would be good. Yeah. All that effort, you know. Yes. So she is working on revamping it, like making it a little more of a, yeah. a condensed type of training instead of having it over seven days. Exactly. Yeah. And we're talking about different venues and a possibly different platform where those that can't attend in person can attend through a, a virtual platform exactly. as well. Yeah. Make it more and is, is that a familiarization process or is it actual training? It's actual training. Because it, it's based on a manual. Yeah. Okay. When it's completed, you have the training. Mm -hmm. You know, but people people like me, like I'm not going to volunteer to be, but I would it's great to understand. Yeah, right. So everybody can benefit. Yeah. Even people from the community can benefit. But also it's a good recruitment tool, yeah. right? Like when because you need volunteers to for the mm -hmm. program. Yeah. For sure. I was just wondering though if there might be a room for something that's more um intended to just acquaint the general public with what restorative justice is. Yeah. In other words, not actually an awareness piece to go through training, yeah. Yeah. but to yeah. just start getting more visibility to the program itself within the community. I don't know if it's social media or newspaper article or and then something that you yeah. know repeats. It's a good point you make time. because one of the biggest barriers for me was like that's lots of yeah, hours. That's what yeah, exactly. I'm thinking yeah. I'm totally, you know, yeah. uh, 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 retired and have the time and everything, and still to put that in, it was two Saturdays, yeah, yeah. right? So, but I think it could be done like in 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 sort of different uh, sections, yeah, right? So sure. you can have one that would be just introductory, it's for the public, and it's oh, short. No. Like an awareness campaign, is that what you're yeah. about? Just for the general public as well, yeah. because you know, for uptake for one thing, and also especially to um, the parts go back to the schools. I think uh, that's definitely something we'll let we'll, we'll, we'll Kathy know about, and then we'll try to set up something up where it's just an, an awareness. I know she can't do it once. No, just yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's a good idea because there's there's this intense training. Yeah, not everybody's interested, right? Yeah. But people are, you know, uh -huh. lots of people don't even know what restorative justice is. Yeah. No. So it's just, it's, it's great to have different. Leave it up to you then. Yes. Okay. Leave it up to me. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to introduce sure. yourself? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi. I recognize everyone. My name is Drew. I'm the new president of the Police Association. So officially now, I was can the interim. Uh, um, Tap for a month. Uh, we have a new executive team. So uh, myself is the president. Adam Sutherland is the vice president. Uh, Corey Hoy will be the treasurer. Uh, Lauren Berber will be the secretary, and Jordan Croto will remain as the special uh, constable rep. So that'll be our team moving forward for hopefully the next year. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to Thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for stepping up and yeah. all the best with it it's process elimination for a while there so <laughs> there's, there's been a few changes so it's, yeah. yeah so hopefully we'll have hopefully some. yeah you know that's great but well we look forward to you know that like we have done in the past we want to maintain a good communication yep. relationship so you know we've been to a couple of the association meetings just to talk about things and we'd be happy to sure. continue that yeah if yeah you we'll want us to yeah, we've got uh, bargaining coming up in, in yeah. June, but uh, obviously in the fall. Right. Or, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, would it be appropriate for me to address the letter now, or is that not? It's in camera. Okay. In yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll just be a fly on the wall then. <laughs> Liz, anything? Did you want to add anything? You're good? Okay, thank you. So we've got uh, director's reports now. So I, I have one actually. Yeah. I took, uh, I participated in the interviews for the um, replacements for the two people who are leaving the board. Yeah. Um, and both of them, they're completely different one from another and they both have really strong um, skills and experience to bring. Totally different perspectives, I think. I think, you know, either one of them would would certainly be a, a appropriate and positive contribution. I have my preference <laughs> of the two. Um, but none of us who were in the interviews will be making the decision. Uh -huh. So the recommendation will go up to the uh, cabinet and we won't know until the end of June. Okay. That's when it's going to be announced. So were you given an opportunity to 
be actually part of that interview? Yeah, ask yeah I, I asked some questions. And, um, one of the things that came up was that there is going to be board-specific training developed. And so it was described in the question as to would you be willing to Participate. You know, take participate in this kind of training and everything. Of course, they say yes. But I just wanted to point that out because for a couple of years now we haven't had any board no. training, right? No. And the last course that I did, um, there were so many negative comments about it. I mean, there were good things about it, but it wasn't uh, targeted specifically enough to a police board yeah. and the actual issues that come up on a police board. Yeah. So that was one of the criticisms. And the other one was that. Um, there wasn't enough uh, BC focused case um, content so that we were talking about things that were actually relevant to you know, a small rural community yeah. as opposed to Halifax or Winnipeg or something like that. Okay. So I'm hoping that those things will be in the new curriculum. Uh, they didn't actually give a time frame for when it would be available, but the new candidates have been asked if they're willing to participate. So I assume that it'll be out pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Well, Liz can probably confirm what you just said about uh, the course that we, the training that we took was very business oriented. And, uh, right, right, Liz, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I think they had even revamped it from what Am and I did for what you did, Sue, and it was very business oriented. Like all the financial stuff was around like Nike Corporation or something. <laughs> yeah, that was our complaint. It was it was like Harvard Business Case. Yeah. I mean, it was very useful in terms of looking at material and trying to decide what the relevant data was and you know how to make decisions. But it didn't have any relation to the actual work we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was uh, a pretty consistent response. So that message was sent to uh, Mr. Billing, David Billing, yeah. and the ministry through the BC yeah. board as well. And so they were bringing a local company out of Vancouver that was developing the course and after responses like this. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it'll be what you're asking. Right yeah. It should be police focused for sure. So then I think we should all go back through it, even if we've already been trained. <laughs> I would recommend that to the whole board, that you should go back to it. Yeah. Because yeah. you wouldn't do no. your job. And you're no, there we, didn't get any. we didn't get any because, <laughs> yeah, so. Well, you should definitely. That explains that. a lot, doesn't it? Well, COVID started. <laughs> yeah. COVID started, and that was the other yeah. issue. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You should definitely be. Yeah. Doing it. I'm sorry if you said, but is it is it an actual in person? It was. It was, of a, yeah. yeah. It was. Um. It was a week or four days or yeah. something like that. It was yeah. significant Very down extensive. down in the lower mainland. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Province picked up the tuition, which was like about seven thousand dollars each, and have to pay our travel costs as well. I wonder if it, like many things, it will go more online or, uh, you know, uh -huh. yeah, either or platform. Virtual. I would hope not because really yeah. the most, yeah. one of the most valuable things was all of the other board sure. members from different communities that you got to know and you could yeah. see how they were dealing with different issues in their right. communities. It was really- well, I think going in person too, apart from those yeah. connections and everything, which I think are super valuable but the uh you know that's your purpose for those four or five days and your focus is on that training not yeah. doing it online where you still got all your daily other that's things stuff. going on and distractions yeah. and yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, you, throw another little longer yeah, yeah you lose so much <laughs> dog needs out so you get up to let the dog out and miss something and yeah i think i think that's true you're really Im immersed in it for a period of time yeah we set up at tables when we do these workshops and we get Two of those police boards and us and the share of things. Mm -hmm. Any reports from the other directors? So it's the only thing I can do is like the, uh, is to do with the, our membership of the BCAPB. So so as you know, each police board has a member of the BCAPB, and my term will be up. So we need to appoint a member from our board to the BCAPB. So. Mm -hmm. To think about it and do it. If we want to choose somebody now, we could announce it at the BCAPB. <laughs> well, if we have somebody who is willing and able. Well, and well that I know that great. we can't ask Liz because she has a job. <laughs> I, I meant to hear <laughs> yeah, this in the room. Would, would, would what, does, what does it entail, though? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you have just about four 
more meetings a year. Mm -hmm. You have to travel to Vancouver where they usually meet. And, uh, the Delta Police Board has uh, volunteered to let us use their boardroom. So it's usually held there, the mm -hmm. meetings held there. Because of our airplane service, it's like a two day thing for us, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because you have to drive to the day mm -hmm. before and then whatever. So that's the, the, then in terms of meetings, if you just want to be a director and not be a part of the executive, like I'm the treasurer. So, great pleasure, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a good command. And so would you. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, budgeting is where you need it. And they do the budget and setting up the, the membership dues for the year. And, um, but they just talk about police boards, talk about the problems that are there and what we should be, issues should be addressed. So it's very much like this, only at a provincial level. Mm -hmm. So this is our, I guess it's part of being a member of the ECAPB. We get to sit on that board, or one of our members sits on the board. So there's 13 uh, municipal police boards. So that's all it is. So if anyone wants to volunteer <laughs> or put their name forward. <laughs> I would be interested. So, Great. Yeah. So would the board be okay with Sue yeah. doing the job of being the representative of BCAPB? Yeah, okay, absolutely. so I need a motion that uh, is moved, mm -hmm. by, moved by <laughs> Lena, and second by Jane. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Congratulations, okay. that's good. I mean, you know what? <laughs> Thank Are you, Sue. Are you going to be at the BCAPB meeting, right? Weeks. I oh. cannot go. Oh, you cannot go. Okay, well, we'll announce it to say this is going to be a wonderful surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and then Veronica, the executive mm -hmm. secretary, will be in touch with people. Yeah, great. Yeah. I'd be happy to yeah. talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any uh, transition support you need from me, just let me know. It's not a problem. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. You'll be just great. Um, I know. Well, that's great. Uh, so, the other thing is also the police foundation. So as you know, we're kind of sponsors for the police, Nelson Police Foundation. And they would like to have a representative from this police board to sit on the foundation board. So I've been sitting, I've been a representative again. So I want to volunteer for that. Well, maybe I can do that. But that's wonderful. <laughs> Chief, that would be a welcome opportunity. So they meet here, they meet in Nelson, right? They meet right here. Right, right here. Room. Yeah, right okay. in this room. Yeah. Perfect. So that's good. Yeah. I'd be happy to do that. And it's only to what things can we do to promote policing and whatever. So we've also come up with a scholarship now for some student at LD that's taking policing or public safety related. Uh, or criminal courses. justice or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So we, we rely on the, uh, the, the school to give us a recommendation. And so that's what it is. I believe it's fifteen hundred dollars, is it? No, one thousand. A thousand dollars. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, and then you get to go on percentage. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. That those are two things I just wanted to get done. You're also entitled to run for and sit on this CAPG board, the Canadian Board of Governance. Oh, maybe that's. But, <laughs> but that's a different story. <laughs> We're sharing the load here, Jane. Yeah. But that's a different story because we don't. We're oh, not you have to be appointed. Yeah, you have, you have to, to be, be elected, actually. Elected. Uh, and, yeah, and it's difficult to be elected because not only must you. Well, no, it's not that difficult. Because it's countrywide, right? Yeah. Yes, oh, country it's national. Yeah. yeah. However, uh, we are, British Columbia is allowed two seats on that board. So even. So even though Ontario and whatever can vote all they want to, they cannot, only the 13 police boards here are vote to end. So that's- Oh, well, you're, you're selected so, by the- Yeah, board. so what happens is I've been talking to the BCAPB board and they said, so they said we want invitations from any police board who would like to put their candidate forward. So this young lady from uh, the Surrey police board, she said she was very interested. And so the board seems to think that that would be a good decision to have her on there. But there's also another member from the Delta board. I'm not sure what his plans are at this point. Okay, so, but it, it's, a, it's at a national level. Now, all the meetings are held virtually yeah. for, for well, that, well, okay. except one a year where you actually meet for the strategic planning session. 
So that's the only one. So it's not that difficult a job either. You know, you know I think if we, you, you wanted to get really engaged with that level, it's a tremendous experience and, and you could be a great contributor. You know, any one of you, I think. Uh, your focus is amazing to me. So uh, I think I'm at the limit of what I can pick out. <laughs> yeah. And we got to leave something for our new members. Yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, CFPG board. No, I think we need no. some people of experience. But you know, when you get there at the BCFPG, <laughs> you'll learn so much about the provincial mm -hmm. uh, um, policing that, that Ottawa will not be that a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Right now, the deputy mayor of Halifax is the board chair of the CAPG, and I'm the vice chair. Mm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's that's all I had to report. Oh, I forgot to. Oh, we already mentioned the, the great evening we had, the awards meeting. Mm -hmm. So it was a really nice thing to do. And it was getting the public together. And so thank you, Chief, and thank you, Shiloh, and on behalf of the board. And, and okay. thank you, Deputy. It was, it was a very nice evening. And yes, well, we've We've almost forgot Liz. <laughs> yes. yeah, she's she was she's yeah. always working for a living, you know. So yeah. we keep forgetting it. <laughs> Thanks very much. All right. So uh, there's no chairs report because the chair is away. Uh, correspondence, but we have these thank you notes that we received. But they're cute and always very appreciated. Nice cards, yeah. Yeah, they're always nice appreciated. And so we respond to them, do we, Chief? Then we just when we receive these notes, do we just say? Any kind of response? Yeah, yeah. It depends. Uh, sometimes the officers themselves respond. Yeah. Sometimes we send a response. Good. Um, depends on the nature of it. But yeah, no, it's tremendous. All right, so those are that. And we've got the Special Committee on Reforming the Police Act. Were you, did you want to speak any more on it, or that's it for now? Yeah. I read through it. I mean, it certainly. There's a lot of work put into it, and uh, I guess without getting into lots of specifics, because there's a lot of information in there, it's, uh, you know, for the most part, I thought it was well done, and there's some really good recommendations. It's, uh, but again, it's the case of where are those resources and funds going to come from, and, uh, you know, we certainly, and I, I don't think any police departments are going to dispute a lot of the uh, potential initiatives that they're looking at doing. I think they would all be of assistance to the police and uh, certainly the police would be happy to turn over more control and more response to mental health crisis and things like that. And socioeconomic type calls uh, to somebody who, you know, maybe has some different tools to kind of address it, but, um, you know, and then not to be negative, I guess, about it, but I, you know, I, uh, the proof will be in the pudding, I guess, when it comes down to it, because reality is, is, you know, and especially in the smaller communities and remote communities, the police are the only agency that's there 24 seven to respond to these things. So it's going to be a, a huge undertaking to make any kind of change, uh, any kind of meaningful change and, you know, across the whole province. But, but I you applaud their efforts. Over what time frame. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they can do it. Um, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, talk negatively about the ideas. Uh, they're great ideas. It's just, I uh, just am waiting to see how they think they're going to actually put them into, into actual practice. See, you had mentioned something interesting, and you had said that, that rural policing is different than urban policing. And how does this act deal with that? You know, and, and I don't know. Yeah, I haven't I, actually read it, so I don't know, know if there's anything specifically. <laughs> but I remember you saying that. You know, it's a totally different book. What did you just say? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. certainly geared for the bigger centers. Yeah. I mean, that's if it's going to work anywhere, that's yeah. the place they'll be able to make it work, but it's not going to change, you know. And in particular for the RCMP, yeah. I mean, we have some of those uh, uh, services here, um, but they're certainly not available you know, after hours or on weekends. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we quite often are assisting them as it is. So, so you know, there's going to have to be significant changes even here. And then you start getting to the small communities and the rural areas of the RCMP police. Like I just... Yeah. I, well, I, they don't even have enough doctors and nurses to keep the facilities open, much less yeah. send extra people out with the police. So, 
Yeah. So I have a question about like, you know, I just looked at the, I skimmed the report, but you know, I didn't read it in detail, but I certainly looked at the 11 recommendations. And I was just wondering whether we as a board, you know, do we get a chance to review? Do we, you know, do we talk about it at some point? See, you know, what is it that works for us? I don't know. Like, I mean, it's just, at this point, it's just a document. Yeah. And uh, there certainly was, um, notes made about there being further public consultation and discussions. Now, mm -hmm. what that's going to look like, and whether there'll be a, you know, a formal piece for the police boards to to comment on, or it's just going to be sort of general public consultations. Uh, I'm not sure where they're going with that. Um, Might that come up <coughs> conference at the end of May? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. So probably. Yeah. 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 Well, what should we advocate for? Yeah. They did a good job of trying to get input from people, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, all of us could have given input. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 If we didn't, then, you know, we didn't. Um, so they've done that, and then they've come up with this. Like, I mean, it still needs, to, like, this is pie in the sky, right? We're yeah. not going to do all these recommendations, but there's some that can be easily done, maybe. And so I just wondered whether there would be, like, sort of a reality check where, where they get more feedback. I think when they do the public consultation, they'll find out what is going to what is going to have the biggest impact in the eyes of the public mm -hmm. and you know i'm sure that that will have an impact on what they decide to actually try to implement and i would i, I think it's a good a suggestion that maybe at the the upcoming meetings that there will be discussions on it but i certainly think the police boards have to have and the police departments too but uh, need to have some say in what's feasible what's realistic yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my response. Like when I looked at the recommendations, they're all very nice, but then some of them are not doable. Yeah. In my opinion. Thank you. So, so new business items. Um, so are there any new business items? Okay. So action list. Well, we have the action list in front of you. I guess we've talked about the diversity committee. It's ongoing. Adopting the complaint resolution process. Have we? Got that all done. It's still ongoing. Is it? Still all ongoing. <laughs> the alternate complaint alternate resolution. Complaint resolution process. Or, or should I <laughs> just use? I don't remember that coming out of the list. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm I'm not familiar with exactly what's been happening with that, so I can't comment on it. I mean, my understanding is. You know, that was a suggestion of some of the advocate groups on dealing with uh, complaints with the oh, police. That's right. yeah. But that's again, that's beyond our control when the police act and the OPCC uh, dictates this is the process you have to follow. So unless it gets changed, we're kind of our hands are kind of tied. So we should really take it off the session list then because there's no reason bringing it up. This well, and, and I think that we have all felt that the, the the DAC is really our response to that. Yeah. It's a way to actually have the dialogue yeah. in a non-confrontational way that doesn't yeah. contravene the police act. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting tying it back to the list of recommendations, right? Because the, I mean, the <laughs> the recommendation about civilian oversight yeah. for complaints is ten it potentially could have a big impact on that one. Yeah. I mean. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I, I would like to see a little more clarity on what sure. we're allowed to do informally, because, you know, there's, it, it's kind of a gray area and you yeah, can yeah. try to deal with things informally, but as soon as somebody's not happy with how it's dealt with, uh, I can see getting our finger slapped for not right. following yeah, the process. Yeah. So well, it's, as soon as any specific incident is mentioned, yeah. then you're in trouble. Well, yeah. yeah, because then you have a duty to... Yeah, report and report. form and, yeah, and then exactly. report how you dealt with it. So yeah, it's, exactly. you know, the informal, the benefits of doing things informally are quickly lost. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, you run, you, you try to do it at some risk to yourself and the department. So, and I, I think know. that that's what, where we've come up against it is that the, you know, the formal process, so, you know, is the process that, yeah. So the, ability of people to access that process is sometimes people you know say that there are barriers and so we have people in the community who can represent them help with representation and, and whatnot and that's been part of what you i guess you would call an alternative 
process, but I think some of this stuff will start to come up more as we get into any police act report. Yeah, I think that's the the right place to fix it right. because you know the process itself even you know once you get past the access issues um it's a long cumbersome process yeah. too that you know it starts to lose meaning by the time there's any resolution to it that mm -hmm. yeah. people have already been frustrated and kind of moved on from it so did they discuss this at all at the bc mc and there must be other communities with the same issue yeah it 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 comes up some, but I think, I, I think, to your comments, I, I think they're waiting to see what's going to happen with this transformation piece because it certainly came up when I was part of the consultation with the special committee. In fact, it was some of my points that I, you know, felt that, uh, you know, being tied to this, you know, inflexible yeah. process, really, I think, caused a lot of departments and managers and whoever else probably not to deal with things because it was just too time consuming and, and so much work for everybody. And by the time any resolution or discipline or whatever the resulting factor was, it was 20 months down the road. It just, to me, it just doesn't have any meaning anymore. So just easier to kind of go like a head in the sand and just move on. So it just, it's a detriment to everybody, I think. And yet it arose out of like the formal process arose out of the inconsistencies in the informal process like that's one of the drivers for having a yeah process, it's the right? whole pendulum thing and it just right you know it really there was a need for it at the time to get a handle on things i'm sure yeah. but it probably should have stopped somewhere in the middle and it just kept swinging to the far right where it's like everything is this, this monumental undertaking and it's just so bureaucratic yeah and plus it's you know it's bad for morale and and bad for people who probably need a real small informal kind of smart up yeah. yeah exactly and it turns into uh -huh. you know this yeah. formal process and it's documented and it's anyway so it's i'm hoping they're there seems like they're working towards trying to address some of it but uh, well we'll just take it out later. of the action items and because it's underway through the diversity committee and and, and this process so, okay mm -hmm. uh the other one no, the committee dors and then the strategic plan is set for June, so Perfect. that's when it's going to be. Okay, so if there's nothing else, then I'll ask a motion to adjourn the regular meeting. By two, second by Jane. All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay. So thank you, Drew.